Welcome back to Shifty's 49ers Talk. In today's episode, we are going to preview the week three matchup between the San Francisco 49ers and the LA Rams. This game is being taken place on Sunday, 1.25 p.m. Pacific time in Levi's South. There's a lot to talk about in this division matchup, but first, let's run the intro. We have a big time NFC West matchup in week three. It's the 49ers and the Rams. And this is a rivalry that really has spanned decades. And there's been just so many big time iconic moments when these two teams have played. Looking at this matchup on the road in Levi's South, the 49ers are favored by seven. And I think you're gonna see why when we get into the team news. And let's just jump right into that. So when you look at the Rams, their injury report, this is a report that is as long as Al Capone's rap sheet. It is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Let's focus on some of the big names here. Cooper Cup is going to be out. Puka Nakua is going to be out. They're starting two receivers. Both very, very good receivers are out for this game. On the offensive line, Jonah Jackson will be out. Joe Nopum will be out. Steve Avilio will be out. So that's three of the five starting offensive linemen who are out. Then you move to the defensive side of the ball. John Johnson, the safety, is out. Darius Williams, the cornerback. Darian Kendrick is out. So those are some big-time names as well in the secondary who are going to be out for this game for the Rams. You move on to the 49ers, though. Debo Samuel will miss this game. Could potentially miss week four's matchup against the New England Patriots. I think that will probably won't be likely because then you get Debo Samuel back fully healthy for week five and six, where you have back-to-back -back division games against the Cardinals and the Seahawks, both teams who've looked pretty good so far this season. Also missing, we have Christian McCaffrey. He won't be back until week six against the Seahawks at the earliest, and maybe it will be a little bit longer. But here's the good news for the 49ers, though. Talano Hufanga is back for this game. According to Kyle Shanahan, he very much expects Hufanga to play week three against the Rams. And that's a big time just guy to get back from injury. When you look at week two last week against the Vikings, that 97 yard touchdown reception by Justin Jefferson, the safeties, Jair Brown and George Odom, they played that horribly. I do think if a guy like Hufanga was out there, that play doesn't happen. And that's someone you're getting back, a former all pro in Hufanga. So that's big news. Now though, coming up next guys, let's talk about the 49ers offense going up against the Rams defense. As we mentioned moments ago, the 49ers are going to be without two key weapons in the offensive side of the ball. No Debo and no McCaffrey. However, there is still a bunch of talent on this offense. You look at Brandon Ayuk, you look at George Kittle, you look at Jawan Jennings, you look at Jordan Mason, who's number two in the league in rushing yards and who's looked really, really good so far. Kyle Juszczyk. The 49ers offense should still be able to move the football, especially against this Rams secondary that is without so many players. So it's a big time game here, I think, for Brock Purdy. Now, one of the big things I think the 49ers offense needs to do is to be able to adjust their protection. Jake Brendel last week against the Vikings, he did not have a good game at all. So many times he got beat badly immediately so many plays he just wasn't even involved he couldn't didn't help any of his other blockers out and it just led to bad things now you do have to give credit to Brian Flores who did a wonderful job scheming against the 49ers offense but Jake Brendel has to be better Shanahan for him on the offensive line the left tackle yes is the most important guy in the line but then it's the center and being able to get good center play is key for this offense to be able to function effectively I'd like to see a bounce back game from Jake Brendel otherwise when a guy like John Feliciano comes back later in the season from injury don't be shocked if you see Feliciano out there when it comes to the Niners offense though a big thing too is going to be able to run the ball effectively they've been able to do that through the first two weeks of the season but a big thing is going to be getting consistency Mason last week against the Vikings he had plenty of runs that went for eight nine ten yards including his touchdown run but the other thing that was happening too to Mason and also to Debo Samuel was so many negative plays you look at so many plays in the run game where you lose a couple yards and that's just something that you can't have happen offensively which 
which put the 49ers in a really bad situation, especially on third down. And that's a big time area of weakness that happened last week for the 49ers offense. It seemed like we were always in like third and eight, third and nine, third and 10 situations. And it was just really, really difficult. And that played right into the hands of the Minnesota Vikings. Of course, the Rams are gonna try and employ a very similar defensive game plan against the 49ers until we can prove that we can beat it. So how do the 49ers beat that? Yes, you run the ball effectively, but also consistently. If you can get four or five yards at a time, at a click, that would be so good because you put yourself ahead of the sticks. You're getting yourself in good situations where you can open up the playbook and you can completely open up the offense and then the defense has to respond not knowing what you're going to do. Otherwise, when you look last week, there were so many times where they knew we were passing. They knew what we were going to do. They read the plays almost before they even happened. It was really impressive. I think, though, in this game, this needs to be the Brandon Ayuk breakout game. You know, it's week three. He's been back practicing with the team for the last three, four weeks or so since he got his massive extension. Ayuk needs to be really productive in this game. There's no Debo. There's no, there's no McCaffrey. Ayuk is going to get a very increased amount of targets in this game. He's probably going to have Tredavious White, who is a good cornerback. I wouldn't be surprised if he's just shadowing Ayuk all game long, but this is where Ayuk has to earn his money. He needs to beat some of the better cornerbacks in this league as he's being you know, paid as one of the highest wide receiver, highest paid wide receivers in the league. So I'd like to see Brandon Ayuk break out in this game. Of course, you're going to have Kittle get his targets. Jawan Jennings, who's had a really good start to the season, he'll continue to get his targets. Don't you know, forget about like Mason in the passing game, use check, but I think this is the Brandon Ayuk game. And Brock Purdy, I want to see him getting some good protection up front, being able to make his reads, but I'd like to see Purdy and I really rebuild the chemistry that they had last year. There were so many times last year where um, Purdy and Ayuk were just absolutely on the same page. There were so many throws where you're like, Purdy was just an absolute dot to Brandon Ayuk. There were times where Purdy's throwing the ball to Ayuk and you're like, no, 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 don't throw that. But then it worked out because Ayuk and Purdy just knew what each other were thinking. And we need to get that back for the offense to have, just to be able to perform like we expect Again, this Rams defense is missing so many players. I think the 49ers offense needs to be scoring touchdowns, putting up big points on this Rams defense. Really a get right game for this offense. When we look at the 49ers defense up against the Rams offense, I'm also expecting a big bounce back game from this defense. The big thing that really hurt the 49ers last week was our inability to get off the field on third down. So many times Sam Darnold on third and long, we're talking third and 10, third and 12, was able to pick up the first down. And this is where the 49ers defense needs to be a lot better. Because what the Rams are going to want to do is to really shorten the game, to have long drives that end in points so you limit the amount of drives in this game and you keep the game close. The way you stop that is you get off the field on third down. And how do you do that? Well, of course, you need to stop the run on the early downs. They're down three offensive linemen. This is a game where the 49ers defensive line should be able to just absolutely feast. You have Nick Bosa, Javon Hargrave, Malik Collins, Leonard Floyd, they're all making pretty, they're all making big time money. They need to be able to step up in this game and really help shut down the Rams uh, running game, but also be able to get after Matthew Stafford on those passing situations. I'd like to see pressure from those four guys, but also if we're not getting consistent pressure up front with the four, I think Sorensen needs to send a little bit more blitzes, whether it's linebackers, whether it's you know nickel blitzes from guys like Lenore or what have you, but get pressure on Matthew Stafford. Stafford is not afraid to take risks, and if you can force him to make throws before he wants to, those risks are not very well calculated, and we can force turnovers in this game. And I think that's what you have to do. Stafford is playing with so many weapons and so many guys who he's not really used to or really comfortable with, and there's going to be miscommunications. If we can force him to throw the ball before he wants to, then that's going to lead to big-time plays from the Niners' defense. Ideally, and what I think could happen is, in his debut game of the season, I could see Talanoa Hufanga getting an interception in this game. Fred Warner has been arguably 
the best player in the NFL this season so far through the first two games. He's been phenomenal. But I think it's time for some of the other guys to step up and make plays too. I want to see Leonard Floyd get after the quarterback. I want to see Devondre Campbell make big plays. Mooney Ward and Lenore, they've been pretty solid in coverage. But last week, something that really stood out to me was Mooney Ward was not good at setting the edges. So many times Aaron Jones was kind of going the middle and then bounce it outside. And you'd expect a guy who has the veteran experience of a Mooney Ward just wasn't there. He kind of moved way too far inside. And then Jones was able to cut it up for a big time play. I really hope they stress that in practice this week, but this is just a game where Nick Sorensen has so many advantages. They're missing a bunch of offensive linemen, they're missing their top two weapons in the passing game. You expect the 49ers defense to come out, you know, shut them down, you know, and be able to force turnovers, and they really should be able to limit what the Rams do, and that's just going to lead to a lot more confidence in the players moving forward, because we're going to have some big games coming up in next week and in the weeks beyond, so Nick Sorensen needs to get it right here and uh, I do expect the 49ers to play well defensively whether that's because the Niners defense just has so much more talent compared to the Rams offense or whether it's Nick Sorensen calling a good game I don't really know I don't really care but I want the Niners defense to bounce back and have a big time performance force turnovers get off the field in third down those are the keys let's now move on to my x factors and my prediction for this game when i look at next factor for the 49ers i'm gonna go with jake brendel brendel the center had a really really rough week two against the minnesota vikings so him having a big bounce back game would be huge for the 49ers offense of course in this game but maybe it rebuilds some of his confidence moving forward if the center is playing well the offense is playing well if you're getting the protection calls if you're getting upfield in the run blocking game i do like the 49ers to win heavily if brendel has a good game but more importantly for the fate of possibly the season Brendel needs to improve himself. He needs to be a lot better than what he was in week two. Otherwise, when John Feliciano's back from injury, he could be right in there. So I think Brendel is the X factor and the guy that I'm going to be keeping an eye on. I do truly believe if Brendel has a good game, the 49ers are going to have a good game, at least on the offensive side of the ball. Now if we move to the Rams side of things for their X factor, and this is going to be incredibly obvious, but it's Matthew Stafford. Stafford is a guy who we all know is one of the best just pure throwers of the football in the NFL. The guy can absolutely launch it. He can throw a perfect spiral. Here's the thing. He's a guy who I think could go out and have 400 yards passing, or he can just have a complete meltdown and throw four interceptions. Ideally, of course, for the Niners, we want the four interceptions. Stafford is playing with a bunch of new weapons, a bunch of new guys protecting him up front, so we should be able to force him into mistakes, but make no mistake about it. Last week, Sam Darnold went out and just threw all over us. We cannot take a guy like Matthew Stafford lightly. Even if he's throwing to some no-name receivers, he's a guy who can just take over a game, and I think the 49ers need to be absolutely ready for that. We can't overlook this matchup by any means. Yes, we're favored, we're on the road, we're favored pretty heavily considering we're on the road, but we need to get this win, move back to a winning record, and then we have a couple of home games coming up, but we need to force Matthew Stafford into mistakes. And if we do that, it's going to lead to my prediction here. And my prediction for this game is I have the 49ers winning. It's going to be 30-17. to I think the 49ers are able to score a bunch of touchdowns, really put themselves on the board. Brock Purdy has a couple touchdown throws. Mason has a rushing touchdown. We're going to give up some points because I think Stafford is going to be airing it out a lot. We will give up some points, but I do think the 49ers should be in command, in control of this matchup. And it could be similar to to what we saw in week one when we hosted the New York Jets. I do like the Niners in this matchup. But there you have it, guys. That is my preview for week three against the Rams. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What are some of your you know, key matchups in this game? What are some of your X factors? What do you think will happen? Really curious to hear your thoughts on this matchup. And of course, guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, do all the good stuff to help out the, the YouTube algorithm here at Shifty's 49ers Talk. I'm gonna head on out, but before I do, do, you know I'm going to say two things. The butt counts, and we'll catch you guys on the flip side.